Have you ever wondered what it's like to live in a metal cage measuring 1.5 square meters, barely big enough for a mattress? These are stacked on top of each other in tiny rooms, which are often infested with cockroaches and bed bugs. The communal bathroom is shared with 20 other people, and those who live here commonly find themselves living in poverty in one of the cities with the highest cost of living in the world. We're talking about Hong Kong's coffin homes. Today, I want to tell you about one of the most shocking housing phenomena I have ever seen, namely Hong Kong's coffin homes, in which more than 220,000 people now live, roughly the same number of people currently living in Messina. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. We're talking about living spaces that are usually illegally built inside old apartments within very large residential complexes, such as the monster building or a lucky house. What they do is knock down non-load-bearing walls and build thinner ones, thus creating lots of small housing units. Let's now take a closer look. Drawing on a report written by the South China Morning Post, see what the most popular types of illegal housing in Hong Kong are, starting with the more, so to speak, dignified solutions and moving on to the most inhumane ones. The most popular housing choice for low-income families is probably the mini apartment. We're talking about studio apartments measuring 30 to 40 square meters that are divided up into three separate housing units, each equipped with a mini kitchen and a mini bathroom. Each housing unit has an area of about 10 square meters, roughly the size of a single person cell in an Italian prison. However, in Hong Kong, such small spaces are often home to more than one person. In fact, in 10% of cases, they house more than four people. For this kind of accommodation, the monthly rent is 6 or 700 euros. To give you an idea, most people living here earn the equivalent of from 1,100 to 1,700 euros per month. The bottom line is that normal apartments cost so much that this is the best many people can afford. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Hong Kong's illegal real estate market has much worse to offer. One rung down, we find the so-called closet homes. With an area of about 3.5 square meters, they're more or less the size of a normal bathroom. Just as before, these spaces are created by adding walls to already existing rooms and, given their small size, are often extremely crowded with personal belongings and there's no private bathroom. Usually, there are one or two communal bathrooms for at least 10 people. Sometimes there's a ceiling fan. If you're lucky, there's a window and the bed is usually next to the stove, leaving practically zero space to move around. For this kind of solution, the rent can very easily reach 450 euros per month, no problem at all. Now we come to perhaps the most iconic homes that illegal Hong Kong unfortunately has to offer, the so-called coffin homes. These are literally just wooden or metal boxes measuring 1.5 square meters, in which a small mattress barely fits and where it's impossible to stand up. Usually, there are 15 to 20 boxes in a room, and both the bathroom and the kitchen are communal. Each home has a sliding door that can be locked with a padlock, and this allows for a small level of privacy, however minimal it may be. On the walls and ceiling, there are also hooks and metal bars on which you can hang personal items, and often at the foot of the bed, there's also a mini television. In this case, in terms of rent, it will cost you around 350 euros per month. At the bottom of the list, we have the most terrible solution you could possibly imagine. Cage homes. These are literally wire mesh cages stacked on top of each other. They're about 1.3 square meters in size, and the floor, just as it is in the wooden coffin homes, is entirely taken up by the bed. Personal belongings are hung on the sides of the cage, and the most you can hope for is a fan to circulate a little air considering that, even in this case, a single room usually contains an average of 15 to 20 cages. Unlike coffin homes, here the sides fail to provide even a minimum level of privacy, and on top of that, you're also exposed to all the odors and sounds produced by the other tenants in the room. Renting one of these will cost you, on average, around 170 euros per month. What most of these solutions have in common, no matter whether they're closets or cages, is that they're illegal housing units. 
In other words, the work of dividing an apartment into smaller units has been done without authorization and without following government regulations. This obviously causes a number of problems, both in terms of safety and more mundanely in terms of basic hygiene. It's no coincidence that in most cases the rooms are extremely dirty and often infested with cockroaches and bedbugs. But who exactly lives in these homes? According to data from the Hong Kong Transport and Housing Bureau, 64% of the residents of these coffin homes are between 25 and 64, and unfortunately, 16% are less than 15 years old. So there are thousands of children and young people who are unfortunately still living and growing up in these conditions today. According to some estimates, there are at least 50,000 minors. Obviously, we're talking about people who typically have very low incomes, to whom we can add retirees, drug addicts, former prisoners, and people with mental health issues. So they're people from groups in society that are unable to deal with the extremely high cost of living in Hong Kong. Where to buy a house? You typically need to spend more than twenty thousand dollars per square meter. To give you a means of comparison, adjusted for purchasing power parity, it's as if in Italy to buy this same house. I don't know. Perhaps in Milan, instead of paying four thousand euros per square meter, which is already a lot, we'd be paying ten thousand euros per square meter. These homes can be found all throughout the territory of Hong Kong, although there are areas in which they are particularly prevalent. In fact, about fifty-five percent of all these housing solutions are located in Kowloon. This should actually come as no surprise, as Kowloon historically is the district in which the first large apartment buildings were built to house Chinese workers back at the time of British rule. In fact, until 1994, this is where the Kowloon Walled City stood. It was one of the most inhospitable places ever built, where 50,000 people lived crammed on top of each other, incidentally making it one of the most densely populated places on the planet at the time. The government's original plan, however, was to relocate all the people living in the terrible conditions in the public housing projects there within a short space of time. The problem is that, oops, Hong Kong has expanded rapidly, and essentially all the land suitable for building has already been used. So the construction of new public housing is progressing very slowly. Just to give you an idea, in June 2020, an estimated 155,800 people were on the waiting list for public rental housing. But in one year, only 10,400 people were allocated a place to call home. This has pushed many people to seek out ultra cheap housing just to avoid ending up on the street, thus enriching the coffers of the underworld and fueling a vicious cycle. This is also reflected in the data. In fact, in 2003, there were about 66,000 illegal housing units, while in 2020, the number grew to 100,000. Moreover, the average cost of these illegal homes has also risen, going from an average of 450 euros to around 560 euros per month. As it stands, the government is trying to take action and plans to completely eliminate these illegal housing solutions by 2049. Whether they will succeed or not, only time will tell. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting because it's a story that I personally knew nothing about. I discovered it recently thanks to Andy Boy, who's behind the camera and suggested it to me. If you know of any other similar situations that you'd like us to explore, let me know in the comments. See you again soon for the next video, right here on Geopop Everyday Science.